Hi guys, it's Dan from DansBestTech.com. Apple just released their 16-inch 2019 MacBook Pro for $2,400. They finally fixed their keyboard and included an integrated GPU with good performance in their base MacBook Pro. How well does the base 2019 MacBook Pro 16 perform? Can it game? Is it worth $2,400? And how does it compare to a couple of alternatives on the market or the now discontinued MacBook Pro 15? Stay tuned for more. If you don't need Final Cut Pro or Mac OS, there are a couple of options out there that perform better for literally half the price. If you've been watching my videos, you know I typically review the cheapest base model. Apple is selling the MacBook Pro 16 base model for $2,400. I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty expensive for me. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. For that price, you get a 9th generation 2.6 GHz 6 core Intel Core i7, 16 GB of RAM, and the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M, and 512 GB of SSD storage. As usual, there are many upgrades available for you to tweak your laptop just how you need it. Apple is also promoting the $2,800 version with the 3.3 GHz 8 core Intel Core i9 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M and one terabyte of SSD storage. Regarding the form, the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro is just as elegant as always. You are paying for the best of the best with regards to form, quality, and durability. The laptop is super thin and doesn't feel heavy. Its solid aluminum chassis feels very durable, cool to the touch, and doesn't show grease from your fingers all over the case like it did on the Razer Blade Stealth. Its dimensions are 14 by 10 by 0 0.6 inches, and it weighs only 4.3 pounds, which is slightly wider, thicker, and heavier than the 15-inch versions from previous years. Specifically, it is 0 0.7 millimeters thicker, 10 millimeters wider, and 6 millimeters taller, and 0 0.3 pounds heavier. The thickness is due to a bigger battery, improved thermal dissipation, and a keyboard with better key travel. More on this later in the video. The width is due to an increased screen size from 15 to 16 inches. Apple was able to minimize the overall laptop dimensions though by reducing the bezel around the screen. The hinge for the screen is super durable as you won't see any screen wobble and the keyboard deck doesn't have any flex like it did on the MSI Prestige 14. Regarding the ports, in 2016 Apple decided to remove mostly all legacy ports on their MacBooks. On this 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, you only get four Thunderbolt 3 ports with speeds up to 40 gigabits per second and one headphone jack. That's it. You don't get USB Type-A, an SD card slot, or an HDMI port. Apple will gladly sell you some adapters and dongles though. Regarding upgradability, nothing is user upgradable. Why? You made it thicker. That said, although I'm sticking with the 512 gigabyte version, I recommend spending the extra $200 for the one terabyte drive if you're a big into video editing and the extra $200 for the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M with eight gigabytes of memory as well. You could be fine though if you dump all your completed projects to an external drive like I'm doing. See links in the description below for my recommendations. Regarding the sounds, let me just say, wow. The six speaker array on both sides of the laptop sound very nice. I thought I was listening to an actual stereo. They get super loud, the bass is totally there, and they don't sound like laptop speakers at all. I have never heard a laptop speaker get that low in frequency before. Way to go, Apple. And if you want an even better sound experience, you can use the new AirPod Pros or the one legacy port Apple decided to leave on this laptop, the headphone jack, for external speakers. Now let's talk about this display. Apple has done it again with their super high quality 16 inch IPS display with P3 gamut and true tone. Text is super crisp, the contrast is super high, and it gets very bright at 500 nits of brightness. As I said before, the bezels are a little slimmer and the top bezel exists 720p webcam. It could be better and doesn't have face ID though. The one thing that's missing that some people might want is touch capabilities. Let me know in the comments if you would want to use touch on a MacBook though. Regarding the keys, Apple has finally moved away from their flawed butterfly keys back to a traditional scissor style key. Up until 2015, Apple had the gold standard for keyboards. The key travel in those butterfly keys were 0.7 to 0.8 millimeters. The key travel in the gold standard era keyboard was 1.4 millimeters. The key travel in the 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro is 1.0 millimeters. 
If you've gotten used to the latest generation of keys, then this keyboard is going to feel like heaven for your fingers. The activation force is lower, the key travel is greater, and you can finally type in a quiet room. But if you're still using the 2015 MacBook Pro in Air like I am, you will be just fine using this keyboard with 1.0 millimeters of key travel. The learning curve is nowhere close to what Apple was wanting you to do for the butterfly keys. After 20 minutes of typing, I was super comfortable typing on this keyboard with only a few mistakes and low fatigue. Way to go, Apple. The only other thing that Apple decided to change on this keyboard was adding back a physical escape key and bringing back the inverted T arrow keys, both of which still exist on the 2015 gold standard keyboards. Moving quickly to the touch bar, yes, it's still there, and no, I don't use it. Are you still taught in school not to look at the keyboard when typing? I've memorized where each key is, and I haven't looked at a keyboard in years. I don't like having to look down to increase the laptop volume or decrease the screen brightness. Yes, all the extra features there are nice. It'll just take a while for me to stop looking at the main screen as I feel like I'm letting my high school computer teacher down. Apple did take the capacitive power button from the 2018 MacBook Air though. You can log in with just a fingerprint, but you don't even have to do that if you're wearing an Apple Watch and it is unlocked. Your Apple Watch will unlock your MacBook for you. As always, I love Apple's glass trackpad with forced touch and simulated click. It feels very premium and is better than any Windows or Chrome OS touchpad. It just feels very sensitive to the touch. As I've said in my previous MacBook Pro videos, it feels like Apple took the sensitivity from the iPhone touchscreen and implemented it into their trackpads. Rolling my finger along the trackpad consistently registers fine mouse movements, which doesn't happen consistently on Windows and Chrome laptops. The force touch capability is fine if you're into that sort of thing, but I've never found a good use for it though. What do you use it for? The simulated click feels very premium as well. Now all sides of the touchpad require the same amount of force to register a click. If you use tap to click like I do, this trackpad might convert you to start physically clicking. I do have two tiny complaints though. My first complaint relates to the clicking and dragging experience. Clicking the trackpad requires a certain amount of force, decreasing the force to a certain threshold to register an unclick. But when moving my finger from one spot of the trackpad to another while clicking and dragging something, the amount of force to register an unclick is completely different than if I don't move my finger. I'm not a fan of this change. My other tiny complaint relates to the size of the trackpad. I know you're not supposed to rest your palms while typing, and I know Apple still implemented a palm rejection software, but it isn't perfect and sometimes I do register false mouse movements and clicks while typing. So now we finally have to talk about the performance of the processor and graphics card. This is the first time Apple has ever included a dedicated GPU in the base model that still has good performance. That said, this base model laptop costs $2,400. The 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro base model is running the 9th generation 2.6 GHz 6-core Intel Core i7 processor along with the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M GPU. In this table, I am comparing the 16-inch MacBook Pro against both the 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro with the same processor and Radeon Pro 555X as well as the 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro with the 4-core Core, Core i7-4870HQ and R9M370X GPU. The 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro finally gets a significant boost to the graphics in the base model, double that of the 2015 version with the M370X GPU. The CPU performance is almost double that of the 2015 MacBook Pro as well. Very nice. The 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro did have thermal throttling issues though. Is the 16-inch version also plagued with these issues? Actually, Apple increased the heatsink size, changed to a more efficient fans, and redesigned the logic board to accommodate more heat. The laptop stays pretty cool when doing everyday tasks like taking notes or browsing the internet. And Apple is claiming that they can run the processor with 12 more watts of power than previous 15 inch MacBook Pros. Max text benchmarks and thermal performance video linked in the description below shows that over time, the 16 inch MacBook Pros CPUs stay clocked at 300 megahertz higher than the 15 inch MacBook Pros CPU. And therefore you get eight to 10% better CPU performance during long sessions. Now what about the GPU? I know that MacBooks aren't designed for gaming, but let's do it anyways. With maxed out settings, Tomb Raider benchmarked at 40 frames per second. Turning Tomb Raider settings to the bare minimum at 720p shows 343 frames per second. After setting up parallels, Witcher 3 averaged around 16 frames per second with maxed out settings, 20 frames per second with high settings, and 40 frames per second with medium settings. 
I was able to play Witcher 3 continuously without any FPS drop as the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M did not thermal throttle during gaming. Of course, running Windows via bootcamp would increase this score and I haven't had a chance to try out Wine yet. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more gaming on this laptop. It's a shame that the library of games on Windows is so much larger and Steam for Linux now has Proton. Here's to hoping that Valve will bring Proton to Mac OS. So as a result, although the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Radeon Pro 5300M isn't as strong as some gaming laptops, obviously, any game can still be played with medium to high settings and scaling back the settings will obviously improve the FPS and fix stutter. Regarding the battery, Apple claims up to 11 hours, and Apple doesn't exaggerate like other laptop manufacturers do. You actually get it. This kind of battery life is superb even when you compare it to the 10 hours on the 15-inch MacBook Pros of the past. You get about an hour longer of battery life. This is due to Apple upping the battery capacity to 100 watt hours, the legally maximum amount allowed on airplanes. So we compared the CPU and GPU performance of the base 16-inch MacBook Pros to its predecessors, but what about the rest of the laptop? As you can see in this comparison table of the 15 and 16 inch base model MacBook Pros, the CPU performance of the 16 inch MacBook Pro does show an improvement against the 2015 to 2019 15 inch MacBook Pros. The GPU performance is finally improved, the keyboard is also finally improved, and everything else is on par. That said, I went ahead and added the maxed out 2015 MacBook Pro with the M370X GPU that is available for $900 pre-owned. To me, this is the last good MacBook Pro, and it is the one that I do all my video editing on. As you can see, it has similar CPU performance, the gold standard of keyboards, the same trackpad that is a little more manageable in size, and the SSD is still user upgradable. The only thing it doesn't have is the touch bar, the T2 chip, and the perfect performance. So again, I have to ask, is the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro worth $2,400? Now, what about Windows alternatives? Does anything perform better than the 16-inch MacBook Pro for a better cost? Technically, yes. On paper, almost all Windows laptops are cheaper with more performance. Since I care more about the GPU over the CPU, I recommend the Razer Blade Stealth 2019 with the GTX 1650 Max-Q, the MSI Prestige 14 with the GTX 1650 Max-Q, and the Dell XPS 15 with the GTX 1650. Links in the description below. But I guarantee you that none of them will have Apple's standard of quality in almost every aspect of the laptop, including but not limited to the trackpad, case design, and thermals. But as I said before, macOS doesn't have the same selection of games, and you have to use major workarounds like Wine, Virtual Machines, or Dual Booting to get your Windows games running. But it's up to you. Let me know in the comments. Will you spend Apple's premium to get the highest quality laptop with lesser performance? To conclude, should you buy the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Radeon Pro 5300M? If you want a MacBook with an excellent and improved keyboard, one with the best-in-class trackpad, display, speakers, and chassis build quality, one that includes a touch bar, one that has 11 hours of battery life, and the one that has good GPU performance in the base model with the ability to play AAA games without thermal throttling, then the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro is for you. Just remember, it is much pricier over previous MacBook Pros available at this time and other Windows alternatives and it has limited port selection for my taste, and it isn't user upgradable. What do you think? Would you spend $2,400 on this laptop? Click like if you like this video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you wanna see more, and check out dancebesttech.com for a full written review.